Hi, I'm Chris Mutchler, Principal Enterprise Architect and VCDX257 from VirtualElephant.com. And in this video, we're going to once again deep dive into the world of Rancher and show you how you can leverage it as a management tool for deploying, configuring, and operating Kubernetes clusters at scale. Let's get started. In this video, we are going to deep dive into Rancher once again. Back in 2023, I recorded my first video on Rancher, showing you how you could deploy Kubernetes clusters inside of a vSphere environment leveraging the Rancher management tool. Now, since that time, it's become one of my top viewed videos on the channel, and I thought it was time for an update for 2024. One of the strengths of Rancher as a management tool is its capability to be able to deploy Kubernetes clusters across a myriad of environment types. From vSphere environments, which I'll show you once again in this video, to Azure, AWS, GCE, and several other cloud providers, Rancher can become that single management tool for all of your Kubernetes clusters, thus allowing you to be able to create an enterprise-grade service offering for Kubernetes based on Rancher. One of the things that I appreciate most about Rancher is its simplicity and ease of operations. Anyone can get a Rancher management tool running up in their environment in just a few moments once they have a machine or operating system available to them. And its ability to almost instantaneously begin deploying Kubernetes clusters makes it one of the easiest management tools out there to be able to configure, install, and then manage from an SRE or operations perspective. So let's dive right into the UI. Let me show you what's changed and how I began leveraging Rancher once again with these updates to be able to deploy clusters within a lab environment very easily. Once you've got the Rancher Docker image running, and I have it running here inside of a virtual machine that I've deployed inside of my vSphere environment, um, and I've actually created a persistent volume um, or static storage for the Docker container to be able to survive after reboots. The first thing that you'll see in the UI screen here is instructions on how to get the boot password um, from the container itself. Now, once you've done that, you can copy the password straight into the UI here. And then once you've done that, it will prompt you to change the password or accept one that they randomly generate for you. And once you've done that, it will log you straight into the main dashboard or UI of Rancher. The first thing that you want to do is actually click on the menu and select cluster management. And from there, you want to select cloud credentials. Now you can see you have multiple options here. I'm going to go ahead and create a vSphere credential that points to my vCenter server that I have running in the lab. I'm going to specify the URL for vCenter. I'm going to make sure that I tell it port 443. And then I'm going to enter the username and password information for that vCenter server. Once that's done, we're actually ready to start deploying a cluster of Kubernetes via Rancher. So once we get back to the cluster management screen, we can go ahead and click Create. This new cluster create screen is one of the key differences between the old version of Rancher and the new version. You can see here that before we had to create some templates to use specifically to point to certain pieces of information that were relevant to our vSphere environment for an RKE cluster to be deployed. In this new version of Rancher, you no longer have to do that. And so you can go ahead and click create, come to this screen, and you can see that it's uh, pre-populated with some information um, that is specific to deploying Kubernetes in a vSphere environment. So as you would typically expect, you can give it a cluster name, you can give it a description, and then from there you can see that it's created this default pool and this pool is going to be a set of virtual machines that it's going to create. And you can see the default actually selects etcd, control plane, as well as worker nodes. Now we're going to want to separate out the control plane from the data plane. And so we're going to unselect the worker um, for this pool. We're going to give it a different name. And then we're going to go through and specify some information 
specific to how I want the cl uh, the controllers to be deployed for Kubernetes within my own environment. Now, one of the key things that I've done prior to getting to this screen is that I've already downloaded an Ubuntu Cloud Image OVA, and I've imported that OVA into my vCenter server, and I've converted that to a template. Um, and that's going to let me specify here on the screen which template I want to use. If you haven't done this before, just Google Ubuntu Cloud Image. Um, you'll see a the first result there will be the one that you want to click. You go through, you select the version of Ubuntu you want, and then download the cloud image that you're you're choosing to deploy for your for your platform. In my case, vSphere, so an OVA file. So you're going to go through. You can give it a pool name. You can give it the number of virtual machines that you wanted to deploy. Um, so I'm going to do three. Um, three is the typical amount of controllers that I recommend deploying. Have to make sure because of etcd and quorum, it needs to be an odd number. So one, three, five, seven, et cetera. And then you can go through and you can change certain things like the data center object, the data store that it's going to deploy to. You can also specify the folder that you want the virtual machines to be deployed to. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and edit the CPU and the memory size um, to be able to make sure that you have enough available capacity for those controllers. And then you can see here in the drop down menu for template where I've actually installed the cloud image template, you can see that I can select it. Now make sure you select the right image. Otherwise, when you go to create this cluster, it's not going to work. Now, once I've selected the cluster image, the next thing that you can edit here is the cloud config uh, YAML area. And so one of the things that I like to customize here for all of my nodes is I like to add a rancher user to every virtual machine. I make it part of the wheel group. I give it sudo privileges, and then I add an RSH, an RSA key for SSH to be able to log into those virtual machines once they've deployed. And you can add all sorts of different things here in the cloud config, depending on your needs and requirements. Like I said, at a minimum, I recommend at least adding an SSH key to a user so that you have access into the virtual machines. Now, once that's done, you can go ahead and select the network. This is the port group in the vSphere environment that you're going to be um, attaching the virtual machines to. Make sure they have DHCP. Um, that is a requirement that I found with Rancher um, uh, so that the machines automatically come up with IP address information so that there's no requirement on you to try and modify IP configs uh, somewhere in the middle of the boot process, which typically just doesn't work. And then once you've done that, you want to go ahead and create another pool by clicking the plus sign there on the lower left screen. Now we're going to create our workers and we're going to fill out that very same information, including that cloud config file and making sure that we choose the right template as well. The last thing that I want to do is you scroll down on the UI screen prior to clicking create is actually to select the CNI selection. So you can see here in the drop down menu that there's multiple choices now. Um, for CNIs within Rancher. And you can see, again, my favorite, Cilium is now available. So we're going to go ahead and deploy this cluster with Cilium to see how Cilium is integrated through Rancher and what components are there for us to be able to start leveraging straight out of the box. Now, once we've gone ahead and selected that, we can review everything that we've already um, inputted into the UI just to make sure that everything looks good. And then we can go ahead and click that create button and it's going to start deploying uh, the Kubernetes cluster inside of our vSphere environment. So once Rancher has uh, started creating the environment, we can go and we can see that it goes into this provisioning state. We can click on the cluster name to be able to see the detailed information as well as switching over to the vSphere environment to see the virtual machines being created. We can watch them from that perspective or we can switch back to the Rancher UI to be able to watch the cluster deploy and the various states. As before, your mileage may vary for how long it takes to actually deploy the Kubernetes cluster. Within my home lab environment, it generally takes about 20 minutes, depending on how long it takes to clone the template, as well as start up the virtual machines, get a DHCP address, and then for Rancher to take over and start installing the various Kubernetes bits and services.
Typically within 20 minutes, I'll have a cluster that's online and ready for me to start further configuring additional services um, within the Kubernetes cluster itself, such as persistent storage and NFS, um, other things like the ingress controller is obviously a critical one as well. And so at that point, we'll have a cluster that we can start leveraging. So you can see here on the screen, the cluster is online. We can go ahead and click it and we'll actually be brought to the cluster dashboard where we can see some very basic information around what's going on within the cluster. We can also download the cube config file to be able to connect to the cluster via CLI. Um, I do that and I actually run the CLI straight off of my uh, Rancher virtual machine where Rancher is actually running as a Docker container. And that just becomes my central point for all of my future configurations and deployments and whatnot. So one of the things here you can see is there's a lot of information about the cluster itself. You can see what the, the nodes are doing. You can see what pods are running. You can see what additional tools are available to you. Um, and then we can go through and we can actually start installing Prometheus and Grafana as a monitoring tool first thing within the environment. Now, the first thing that I do and that you can see here on the screen is I actually install an NFS uh, pod inside of the cluster that connects back to an NFS server that I have running within my lab that I can then create persistent volumes on. So I install the NFS piece. If you want to see how to do that, I'll link a description in the I'll link in the description below um, a link to my GitHub repository for my Kubernetes sample app where I use this same pod to be able to do persistent storage um, for RabbitMQ. And then I go ahead and I've created a storage class um, specific that I want to leverage off of my NFS server within this Kubernetes environment. And then once I've done that, then we're ready to actually install Prometheus and Grafana and make sure that we have persistent storage for those metrics so that they maintain state over a long period of time. And so you can just click on the monitor and install monitoring um, inside of Rancher. Again, this is one of the things that Rancher does really well for us is that it bundles a lot of these things that are commonplace within Kubernetes clusters directly through the Rancher UI for us to leverage. So we don't have to go hunt down other YAML files or figure out what other people have done for how they've deployed some of the common applications. And so you can see all of the charts within Rancher for the various things that we want to be able to install. And again, they link right there in the top right corner for install monitoring on a fresh cluster. We then select the monitoring chart, and then we get here to the screen for uh, Prometheus and being able to configure Prometheus and Grafana um, and customize that configuration for our environment. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select uh, where we're going to install it. So we'll install it in the default project. And then we're going to go through here and we're going to modify Prometheus to be able to leverage persistent storage. So we're going to check that box there on the screen for persistent storage. And then you can see we have an expanded set of options that we want to be able to leverage specific to um, persistent storage and persistent volumes. You can see when we click on that storage class name, you can see that there's the NFS client. That's what default comes with the pod. And then I've created that standard storage class for my, clus my Kubernetes cluster. So we go ahead and click standard. That's now hooked back into my NFS server. You can specify a size or modify the size if you need to. And then we're going to do a similar thing for Grafana. We're going to uh, select that enable with PVC template radio button. And then it's going to populate some information on the screen for us. That's specific to persistent volumes. Again, pick that standard storage class name, read, write once, many, and then we can specify a size, and then we can go ahead and click install. And Rancher is going to automatically install Prometheus and Grafana. It's going to pre-configure it with a wide variety of dashboards right out of the gate for us to be able to leverage. And it's also going to open up this uh, mini shell window within the UI as it shows us how it's installing uh, Prometheus and Grafana within the Kubernetes cluster. And then once that's done, we'll be able to see some tie-ins to Grafana immediately in the Brancher UI for our cluster without actually having to go out to the, uh, to the Grafana service that's running 
although there is a hyperlink and you'll see us hit it here on the screen in just a moment to be able to select the Grafana UI. It opened a new window for us in our browser. Once we click that Grafana uh, UI hyperlink and it opens up the new browser, then we're going to see a myriad of other dashboards that instantly become available for us to be able to leverage um, inside of our Rancher Kubernetes cluster that it's deployed and, man and is managing for us. And it's really this streamlined operation that differentiates Rancher from several of the other Kubernetes management tools. So it's had a little bit more time to bake in these features to get this UI streamlined for us and to make it very easy for operators and cloud architects to be able to manage and operate a Kubernetes service offering directly through Rancher. And so there you have it. Once again, we can see how streamlined Rancher is as a management tool for Kubernetes. We can see how quickly you can spin up a Kubernetes environment. In future videos, I'm going to show you how to leverage Rancher for Azure, as well as deep dive more into the Cilium integrations that we now see within Rancher so that we can understand what is built in from a Cilium stack perspective via the Rancher installer and how we're going to manage Cilium and Rancher Kubernetes clusters from a lifecycle perspective going forward as far as doing version upgrades, deploying additional tools like Hubble, being able to leverage service mesh via Cilium as well as the ingress controller for Cilium as well so that we can have it be our simplistic CNI stack um, that runs everything for us from a networking perspective within our Kubernetes clusters. Now, if you're enjoying this content, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, turn on those notifications, and hit the like button, and let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. I hope this updated version of Rancher is helpful to all of you out there who are striving to learn more about Kubernetes. As I've talked about in previous videos this year, I think that Kubernetes is the one thing that all of us should be focused on in 2024 from a skill set perspective so that we can broaden our capabilities to be able to make ourselves more marketable out there in the job market in these difficult times that we find ourselves in. So I hope that you're enjoying this series. I hope that you're finding these, use these videos useful. Please leave me a comment below. Please reach out to me on X at Chris Mutchler. Let me know what you think. And until next time, I'll talk to you soon.